Hey, welcome back. I'm glad you're joining me today. I want to talk about this contraption here. This is a slow speed carbide grinding and lapping machine. Uh, very much like a AccuFinish grinder. You can look up those via Google. Um, they're basically a very slow running grinder, bench grinder, with an adjustable table and some accessories. They are a little bit pricey if you want to buy them new, and I was very close, about this close, to buying one new, but in the end I didn't, and I cobbled together this thing. It has a, a 24 volt motor, gear motor, runs about 240 RPM here on the wheel. It takes 100 millimeter wheels, and the wheels have a quick change mechanism that I designed. They are held on with magnets, four magnets here in this aluminum faceplate and two drive pins which drive the grinding wheel. And you just slide the wheel in here and it, it holds via the magnet. And this has already proven to work excellent. Uh, it's self-contained, it has a 24 volt power supply in the base in here. And it's running both directions. Uh, has an adjustable table here. Goes from 45 to I think minus 20 degrees. And it's especially useful to put the final touch on carbide lathe tooling. Like this, this 45 degree ID OD chamfering tool. You can come in here and put a almost mirror-like finish on this this edge in, in, in tungsten carbide without any any edge fractures. Also you can change the the orientation which the motor runs so you're always grinding into the edge. You want to grind carbide whenever possible always into the cutting edge otherwise you create micro fractures and you end up with a <laughs> with a ragged edge that wears way faster. Of course it's also useful to grind carbide scraper blades like this one. This is a, a like a, a sandwich scraper blade insert thing and you can just do your usual radius grinding on here, your freehand lapping. This is not for massive material removal. This is only for sharpening, lapping and also to, to to form tiny corner radii on lathe tooling, for example. Uh, I do not only have this diamond wheel, but I also have a, a ceramic disc. This is an aluminum oxide, uh, alumina ceramic wheel or, or disc. This comes out of the chemical laboratory equipment. I bought this on eBay and I cannot recall what it was called, who the seller was or whatever. This is, I hope somebody will put uh, the name for these things in the comments. You can also buy a real ceramic lab for, uh, for the Glendo grinders, but also if you look on eBay and you look for um, gem cutting or stone grinding, equipment you will also find ceramic labs and the idea behind these is you charge them with for example one micron diamond then you have a crazy crazy fine diamond wheel and as it's uh, ceramic you can easily grind against the cutting edge and the carbide tool will not dig into it because it's it's very hard a lot of people use try to use um, a cast iron lap for carbide but does not really work so well because uh, the carbide will dig into the into the tungsten car uh, into, into the cast iron lap if you run run it against the cutting edge. That's what you want. So I'm going to take a piece of one millimeter sheet metal or two millimeter sheet metal and super glue it to the back of this uh, uh, ceramic disc and. Previously, I will have drilled the holes that I need into the steel disc so I can put this on here too and use it as a ceramic lab. So 
I didn't film a whole lot of machining, but I have some footage that I will show you and some, some uh, construction details. I didn't show making the, the base here at all. This is, this is but ugly. Um, this is just welded together out of, of, out of square tubing. And I epoxied some, some uh, debond aluminum material. This is a three millimeter plastic with aluminum on both sides in here as panels. And the, the power supply is down here. I will show the power supply later. Um, put on this but ugly color. This part here is 3D printed in another but ugly green. And yeah, that's it. Okay, let's say we have this uh, 90 degree tool for the lathe, which is ground out of solid carbide, and it has a large, uh, large relief to the bottom here, so it can work on the ID. And we want to lap it, or put a very nice finish on it. That means that we, first we blew up the surfaces, so we see what's going on. And then we come in here and we get an idea how to orient the tool block. And then we lap away. And after some a few moments you will see black dust starting to form on the on top of the tool and that means that we're very close to being ready there we go that's the that's the finish we get off this carbide lap or this diamond lap now we go to the other side of the tool and repeat. You can use some, for example, WD-40, um, which helps to, to keep the, the wheel clean, but it's not strictly necessary. And there we go on the other side. Quite a nice finish. Not a mirror fit. Not a mirror finish. Uh, that's what the carbide lab, uh, the ceramic lab did before. But we can put a nice radius on the end of this tool now. Just by freehanding it. can put a very nice nose radius and of course we want to lap the top of this tool too but that we reverse the direction of rotation and we lap like this This takes, of course, longer because of the larger contact area. But that's what we get. Okay, here is a close-up of the lapped tool. And you can see here and here are the relief surfaces and they have an excellent finish. Uh, this is, this is uh, almost a mirror finish. And you can see the radius in front here, which has the same very good finish. And the top is not, not as good. But it's still pretty decent and uh, very serviceable but 
here you can see the real advantage of the slow speed grinder. It allowed me to, to form this small corner radius without much trouble and with excellent surface finish. Another very cool application are molded inserts, molded carbide inserts, with even, even coated ones. I do a lot of very small turning uh, turn parts. I, ha I have to do about 40 very precise and very small stainless parts in near future. And for those applications, razor sharp carbide tools are really useful. And you can take a molded insert and grind the micro bevel like here. That's a, a smaller bevel with a slightly smaller relief angle than, than the main relief angle onto the insert and and then it's an, a sharp insert. And that's really quick too. There we go. The idea is uh, normally the insert here in the cross section, you have your relief angle and then you have an edge radius. Then you have kind of a land or so some something else. And then there is the chip breaker geometry, whichever the, the manufacturer uh, does there. This is cross section now. Relief angle, edge radius and chip breaker. This is what, what the manufacturer does, so especially the, the edge radius here. This is what makes the carbide insert last in a production environment. A dead sharp edge does just not last as long. But I have different uh, needs on an insert than somebody who does high production on a CNC machine. So what I basically do is I lap away all the material up to here And I end up basically with relief angle, land, chip breaker. So I have a, a dead sharp edge here. This what allows me to turn with very, very small depth of cuts and still get a very good finish. I usually did this with a very fine uh, diamond wheel on debit grinder. But on the slow speed grinder here, it's, it's faster and easier to, to, to do because you can just freehand it. So in my, in my junk pile, I found this motor. This looks like a window wiper motor. That's the same I used on my power feed of the milling machine. But before you're concerned, this is rated for 100% duty cycle, so it can ra run continuous. These are out of a piece of industrial equipment that's used in PCB manufacturing. So these run all the time and do not fail. So I'm going to use this. This runs of 24 volts and it runs about, I think, 200 RPM at full speed. I, I already machined off camera this flange here, which bolts to the face of this motor and has a bearing pressed into it. And this is to stabilize the output shaft of this motor because it does not have a ball bearing in here. It's running in a center bronze bearing in here. And the nature of load we're going to put on this wheel is a lot of pressure on, on, the, on the outside here. And I'm pretty sure that a ball bearing will hold up better for this. I also, you just saw this, this is a chunk of aluminum 7075, high strength aluminum, turned into a disc board to 10 millimeters so it goes over the shaft of the motor. This is our actual grinding uh, plate. This will accept these 100 millimeter uh, sheet metal wheels that are direct bound diamond uh, wheels. 
there is actual diamond on these. This is a thousand grit. They are available up to three thousand grit. And I also have a solution for ceramic lapping, which I will show you later. Uh, the way we are going to mount these on here is with magnets. I want them to be easily exchangeable. So we're going to put three magnets on here. And these plates are steel, so they will plunk, hold up nicely. And we will add two pins to transfer the torque. And a central hub to center it. So it's as easy as that. So next step will be to drill and tap this plate here for the magnets and the drive pins. Also we have to drill this motor on, on, the, on the, in the end of the shaft for an M5 screw so we can bolt this whole mess together. I have my AUX tools inspired uh, setup block here in the vise which is tapped for threads up here and um, I can hang the motor over the edge of this block like this with the flange mounted and use a strap clamp here and a piece of aluminum uh, brass shim stock to bolt it down. And the second one back here. Yeah, I could take off the vise and build something elaborate with, with a lot of blocks and parallels and stuff like that. But this is a, a quick and dirty setup here. I could also take the shaft out of the motor and put it on the lathe and do it there, but I have no idea how this gearbox goes apart. So I, it, in my mind, this is the easiest and fastest solution. And I'm pretty sure this is already rigid enough to do the drilling. So I'm not going to do any supporting on this outboard end here. So let's get the let's rough position this using the drill chuck. There we go, rough positioned. So I centered the motor shaft, which is a bit, little bit tricky because it has a D shape, means a large flat on here. Oh, I'm stupid. If I take bronze bushing on here, which is a, a very close fit, I have a full round surface that I can use to indicate it. Just occurred to me. So already, yeah, that's way better. That's way easier. <laughs> Let's hope this doesn't fly apart. Ugh. <laughs> Even as this is a warm drive, it still wants to move. Let's add a toolmaker's clamp as a drive dog. This rests against the clamp here. There we go. Went in 16 millimeters. Deeper. And tap it. Run it at slow speed. Zero out the DRO. And we're going 13 millimeters deep. There we go. I put the faceplate for the grinder on the mill and I drilled the whole pattern for two drive, tin, drive pins, three millimeter dial pins and four pockets for these magnets which I also happen to have in my scrap bin which will be epoxied or super glued into these pockets. Uh, now we will cut two two small notches in the from the outside so I can use a screwdriver to get the grinding wheels off. Doesn't need much. 0.75 millimeters depth or is probably enough.
go. And while we're here, it's also easy to drill the one grinding disc that I have. Just put this on here and use two clamps to hold it in place and then we drill through it. That's easy because we already have centered on the aluminum disc and this will make it easy. For now I only have this one grinding wheel but I definitely going to order more of these. You will find them on eBay if you search for diamond wheel or diamond thousand grit or a diamond uh, 100 millimeters or diamond four inch or whatever um, you will find them i'm not going to to put a link to this wheel into this description because the the people who sell these change each week anyway so um, it's probably completely useless to put the link in there because it will be available for a few minutes. Uh, notice that the diamond does not go all the way up to, to the center of the plate, so it's easy to drill here. We could drill through the diamond plating too, because the drill will bite through. But in this case, we don't have to. There we go, two holes. Off camera, add the magnets into the aluminium plate. So I super glued the magnets in here and I used a strip of plastic, uh, Delrin, with a clamp to hold the magnets flush or slightly below flush um, with a clamp. The Delrin has the nice effect that super glue doesn't stick to it so you can just pull it off afterwards. And I uh, glued in two dowel pins they are slightly proud of the surface, about 1.5 millimeters. And here is the diamond plated disc that's drilled for, for the two drive pins. And this snaps nicely into place and it's, it's really firm on there. It's really, it's really holding on very nicely. Um, this big aluminum disc, before you ask, has an M5 thread on the side to lock it against the flat of the shaft and the axial screw that pulls it up against the face and against the bearing. So this is reasonably rigid and has basically no axial play because it's running up against the bearing. So that's okay. Okay, I cut these two parts out here and this needs to route out of 3mm sheet metal. And these are the side trunnions that go on the tilting table of the, of the slow speed grinder. The parts were held on a sacrificial block of, um, of ranch shape, which is a polyurethane foam. I like to use this stuff as a sacrificial block because you can cut into it and it doesn't harm the the cutter at all. It can be super glued, it takes wood screws, it takes metal screws and it's reasonably cheap and it's easy to surface if it's worn down. And the way I hold these parts on here is with um, blue scotch tape on both sides and super glue in between the um, so-called super, super glue technique. John Saunders showed that numerous times in a in bunch of videos. The only problem is to get it off. Sometimes you can sneak in a screwdriver and just pry it off like this. And really the, the benefit compared to using double sided, double sticky tape, it doesn't leave as much residue or at all. And it doesn't tend to gum up the end mill. I tried the powder, ta powder coating tape that uh, John uh, recommends, but I'm not too happy with it. I prefer 
I prefer the blue masking tape. So let's see if we can get these parts off here without damaging them too much. Sneak in a razor blade and use a screwdriver to pry it off. Dunk. A reasonably nice wall finish here. Um, Use the three millimeter three fluid carbide end mill, and I spiral spiraled down the contour into solid, and then took a finishing pass at full height all the way around. There we go. Slide the razor blade in. Get a screwdriver. You could jam the screwdriver between the part and the polyurethane foam too, but that tends to leave a mark on the part, so that we don't do that. There we go. That's two for two. Here is the base, which is a frame out of 20 by 8 millimeter uh, square tubing. It has the two trunnions, which are, the, are out of 3 millimeter sheet metal welded to it, and they have a reamed 8 millimeter hole. Uh, when I welded the trunnions to the base, I had an 8 millimeter shaft in here, and I checked for for warp bridge, so it, it still spun freely in there. Then I machined those two moving trunnions on the CNC router and I took a piece of angle iron, I, I machined the inside here so I could weld those two brackets in there, here and here. And I took a piece of 3mm sheet metal, rounded the edges and tick braced it to this angle. Uh, I went for tick bracing because I didn't want to put a lot of heat into this, this plate and warp, warp it like a potato chip and it stayed reasonably flat. So that's the table. And it goes on here. And you take your shaft and it goes through there. Uh, shaft collar will go on both ends of the shaft so it's locked so it, it, and captive. Then we have these arc-shaped uh, holes those screws that go along here. I will get some adjustable uh, kip handles. Don't have M4 uh, in stock. And that's my angle adjustment. Uh, it's as easy as that. Then we have our drive unit with the flange machined with the two M M6 holes that bolt in here. There is our slow speed carbide grinder with an adjustable angle table. Uh, goes from minus, uh, not sure how much that is, to down to 45. I think it's minus 20 or something like that. Way more than you need. Normally you need minus 5 to get, uh, to shorten your, your scraper blades. And yes, it would be wise to put the pivot point exactly on the face, in line with the face of the grinding wheel, because then the distance between the table and the grinding wheel will never change. But for various reasons, I opted to go this route. For one, I need this large gap here so I can yank the grinding wheel out there. Yes, those magnets are strong and I recommend using a screwdriver there. And also I have different thicknesses of grinding wheels. And also it was easier to do the alignment with a shaft through there. Um, and the motor in place. I had gauge blocks in here to, to align everything and that it was just easier. And the, the changing gap size here is not really a big deal for the work I do. And if I really need zero clearance against the grinding wheel, I can always take a, a piece of sheet metal and, and just clamp it temporarily to the table and move it all the way up to the grinding wheel. If I have to lap something really tiny. But apart from that, um, I'm quite happy how it came out. Uh, strictly stuff that I had lying around except for the grinding wheel. I kind of bought that for something else, but it fitted here quite well. 
This motor doesn't have any cover back here, so I designed one in CAD and 3 printed it in, in uh, green PLA. I printed it with 100% infill. This thing is crazy sturdy. Took 5 hours though. Um, the problem is this motor has no way to mount a cover back here. Uh, I'm not sure how this was designed, but it has this plastic uh, uh, dovetail shape here. Probably that's what used to, to mount some way of a cover or a large connector or something like that onto the motor. So I designed this piece here. which intersects with the shape and has a captive M6 nut back here uh, because I dislike threading into uh, PLA. And this slides very tightly onto this contour and gives me a, a good hard point to mount on. And this cover here, when you, when you wind up all the wiring in here, goes up right here and has a central M6 screw which goes into this captive nut in this black piece here. Uh, the wiring is very simple. I have a, a two-pole, two-throw switch. So it has uh, neutral, left, right. And it's wired so I can run the motor in both directions. Uh, cable comes out here. This is 24 volts input. There's a 24 volt power supply which will be housed in the, in the base of the grinder. So let's, let's coil all, all these wires up and get them in here, put, put a screw in. And because people will ask what I use, I use Alibra Design Expert as a CAD, I use Prusa Slicer as the slicing software, and I have an Ender 2 3D printer. So. I hope you enjoyed this, um, this discussion of the slow speed grinder. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.